keeping well. The Lord has kept you. The Lord has sustained you. We thank God for yet another privilege that He has given us to congregate before His presence, to listen to His word, to learn yet another series of this midweek series. But so uh, before we start, I'll just like us to thank God for this session. Thank God for the day. Thank God for His goodness, for His mercies throughout the week. He has kept you from the beginning of the week up to this point. So it's by His grace that you are alive. It's by His grace that you have what you have. The Word says, the Word of God says, No man receiveth anything unless it cometh from above. So let us just take a few minutes to thank God as we get into this session. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We bless your name, Jehovah Lord. We bless your name, Heavenly Father, for this day, for a new opportunity to congregate before your feet, Lord. We say that you are Lord and you are King of Kings. You are highly and highly to be praised, Jehovah Father. As we listen to your word today, Lord, we ask that you speak to us, that you minister to our hearts, and may you speak to our spirits, Jehovah Lord. We ask that as your word comes forth, Lord, May you impact our spirits, may you impact our souls, and them that this word is for them today, Lord. May they receive their portion in Jesus' name. We pray that you may open our spiritual ears, may you give us understanding, that as your word comes forth, we shall be able to comprehend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With God's grace, I'm privileged to be sharing with you today. Uh, as we look into the four the fourth part series of the rewards. So uh, we've been looking into a series of rewards. We focus on the person of Jesus. We looked at the reward of health from the first Thursday. We looked at the reward of finances. We looked at the uh, spiritual, holy, the spiritual rewards that come uh, from the word of God that was looked into last Thursday by God's servant, Brother Dickens. So by God's privilege this week, or today, we shall be looking at the reward of peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now before we start, uh, I'd like us to have an understanding that peace is relevant. What you may think of as peace is different from what I think of as peace. But the peace that I'm going to be talking about today is the peace that... Christ gives, the peace that is scriptural, the peace, the peace that has been documented in the word of God. Hallelujah. And by that virtue we shall be making references to scriptures from time to time. So I'll urge you to have your notebook closed. If you have your Bibles, bring them closed. If you have your Bibles in your phone, well that can also do. But we'll advise you to have a physical Bible. So that by the time you open, by the time you read, by the time you read the word, you get the understanding, you get to relate to the word, develop a connection with the word. Hallelujah. So, uh, as we start, I'd like to, to read from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22. Open with me to the book of Galatians. It's in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Galatians is after Corinthians. It's after 2 Corinthians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22. As you look at the rewards of peace. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering gentleness goodness faith and as we proceed on up to verse 24 verse 23 says meekness temperance against such there is no law and verse 24 and they that are christ's have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts hallelujah so first of all i need us to understand that peace is a fruit just like you may harvest a fruit, a mango, an apple, uh, a banana from a tree, it comes from, a fruit is produced at an earlier, a later stage 
in a plant's uh, life. A plant needs to first be planted. The seed needs to be buried in the ground so that it shoots up from the soil. And as it, as it grows, we see it, has, it develops in different stages. There is a point it grows to one feet tall, another point it grows to about three feet tall, some grow up to well up to nine or ten feet tall, depending on the type of the tree. Now, it's not until a tree is mature that it, produce, it produces its fruit. Praise God. We need to understand that for a tree to produce it, its fruits, it does so at a mature stage. Now, the reward of growth in relation to today's summer, that a tree um, gives forth a fruit, is that it grows. The process of growth is what determines the availability of fruit on that particular tree. If a tree grows and at a tender age it is cut off, then it means it shall not bear fruit because it has not reached uh, the point in life where it was supposed to give fruit. Similar to us, as we develop in life, as we grow, as we move on from our day-to-day -day activities, it's a process. Before you give forth fruit, uh, there's a process that you must undergo. You need to know how to develop the fruit. Now, the fruit in this context is the reward, the reward that comes out of this process. So from the book of uh, Galatians, chapter 5, we can clearly see that the scripture tells us that this is a fruit. So peace is a fruit that we are guaranteed by the Bible, by God, rather. Hallelujah. So if you look at uh, this process, like uh, before you get the reward, a reward, a reward is given forth to you or is partaken by choice. You, take, you, you partake the, the reward of peace by choice. Take, for example, there are people around that from time to time may seem to be into conflict. They, they, they do not want peace. They are, they are always up for fights. They are always up for quarrels with people around them. But there are those people that if you want to start a conversation with them, they simply put you off and say, you know what? I don't want trouble with you. I want peace with you. Hallelujah. Or if there is a conflict between the two of you, he or she may come and say, you know what, I know I was wrong, but I'm asking for forgiveness. Let's reconcile. This is the process where someone is creating peace. So peace is a choice, first of all. You need to understand that peace is a choice, and it comes by you desiring. If you desire the peace, then you go after the peace. Now, what are we looking at today? What are we discussing in terms of peace? We're looking at the person of Jesus in terms of peace. When, you, when you're talking about the reward of peace, you're talking about the peace that Christ has given us. Hallelujah. So if you read the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace, always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that God is the giver of peace. If you desire the peace that this world cannot give, God is the giver of peace. And from the scripture, we can clearly see that the Lord himself, himself gives you peace. God does not camouflage the reward that he has for you. He's not saying that uh, for me to give you peace, you must first do ABCD. No. God says he himself gives you the peace. He gives you the peace that you so desire in your, in your life, the peace that you desire in your business, the peace that you desire in your relationship, the peace that you desire in the endeavors that you're partaking, the endeavors that you are in. So it's important to know that for you to get this peace, you must first desire it. You must first desire, decide that I want this peace. Once you've decided and made a choice that you want the peace, you desire it and go for it. Hallelujah. So, God also desires that we have peace. In fact, above everything else, God wants us to have peace so much that in His Word, He has instructed us that we should not worry. We should not put ourselves in a situation where we, we lose peace for the sake of factors that are surrounding us, for the sake of things that happen in our lives, for the sake of uh, events that happen in our lives. This is clearly documented in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6, which says, 
Be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. Let me just stop there and absorb this. Uh, be anxious for nothing. Is it food that you want? Do not be anxious about it. Is it finances that you want? Do not be anxious about it. Is it food? Is it a relationship? Is it a spouse? Is it whichever thing that you need? God says, do not be anxious about anything. Be anxious for nothing as you proceed. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Hallelujah. So by the time you, 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 you're having these desires, you're having uh, the urge to fulfill yourself with the various things that you may need in your life. By the time you want to reach out and get the various things that you need for your day-to-day -day, uh, progress, for your day-to-day -day movement. In as much as they may not be in our reach immediately, God says that these things should not deny us the peace that we should have. But in prayer and supplication, let us make our requests known to Him. Hallelujah. By the time you present your requests to God, God will give you peace. What I've come to learn over this uh, short time that I've lived is that at times peace is not what you may want it to be. Peace may not be trouble being taken away from you. Hallelujah. Quite the contrary. Peace is more of uh, having the feeling of fulfillment or patience even in the storm. While you're in the waiting period, yes, I want that particular job. Yes, I want uh, that particular thing. I want object A, B, C, D. But because I do not have it, knowing that God has promised that he will supply all my needs according to his word, I have the peace. I have hope. Hope gives you peace in this particular context. Hallelujah. So that by the time you're in this stage of waiting, you're in the stage of building, in the, st in the, in the stage of process, which may be very difficult at times, God gives you the comfort that you need. He comforts you with good things. He comforts you. He gives you a spirit of settlement, of contentment, such that by the time you are hopeful for the things that are to come, you're still there. You're still confident that he'll do that which he has promised to do. Hallelujah. The book of 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16, it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Hallelujah. Now I want us to take a uh, note of what this scripture says, 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Uh, it says, now may the Lord of peace. It means for you to have this peace that God, the reward of peace that uh, we are talking about today, you need to come to a point where you acknowledge, or rather you have this uh, you know who the giver of peace is. Yeah? And we are told that th th this, but in this verse, you're told that uh, the Lord, the Lord is the Lord of peace. Hallelujah. The Lord of peace. So for you to have the reward of peace, you need to have the Lord. The Lord is the reward. Have the Lord and you have peace. Hallelujah. So the peace of God was a plan that God had from the time of creation by the time he was uh, orchestrating everything by the time he was developing uh, this particular setup of the earth the setup of human beings god had peace in mind hallelujah i remember reading from the book of uh, judges by the time the israelites were asking for a king one of the things that god told them he mentioned that the kings that the, the human rulers that these people want will deny them the peace so it means by the time god was doing making creation by the time god was creating uh, everything that he had made it had the reward of peace in it hallelujah so if you read uh, going, moving forward to the next scripture the book of john chapter 10 verses 10 i'm reading from the uh, new king james version it says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I want you to take note of all these things that the enemy comes to do. The enemy comes to steal. Is it your finances? Is it your health? Is it your peace? The enemy comes to steal.
steals your peace. So first of all, he gets to see when we lose peace, or rather when you lack peace, it's not of God. Hallelujah. When we lack peace, it's not of God. God orchestrated that we are supposed to be peaceful. That's why he sent his son Jesus. As we read on further in this scripture, it says, I have come that, still John chapter 10 verses 10, I have come that they may have life. They, they to mean us, the human race, the children of God, the sons and daughters of God. The very purpose, the very reason why Jesus came to earth among the, very, the, the several agendas that he had was to bring peace to us. Aside from saving humanity, which was the bigger picture, he came to bring us peace. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that I have come that they may have life and that, may, and that they may have it more abundantly. So God wants us to have this peace abundantly. It takes me back to uh, some years back when I was in primary. I remember there was this one time uh, I used to have very uh, poor understanding back then or rather I want to say an attitude in mathematics. So I was always guaranteed that if I had submitted my assignment at some point I was going to be caved because there was some minor error I was doing with my work. So there's this one time I told my brother, he's very good in maths, so I told him, uh, you know what, I'm always being caved in school and he asked why. And I told him it's because I can't really answer some questions in mathematics. So that particular day he did my assignment, which was a, a good thing and a bad thing, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I was so confident in his knowledge of mathematics that I didn't check what he had done. So I submitted my assignments as we used to you collect your books, uh, they're submitted to the teacher, they're marked, brought back. So for the first time in a very long time, I'd scored everything in my assignment. And I was very impressed. I was very happy. So he said, uh, I've reaped the fruits of uh, achievement in mathematics. So my friends around the class were like, oh, you got everything. So how did you get this? Then during that day, the math teacher came in. And I was just there and I was like, okay, you thought I can't get everything now. You've marked my book, I have everything. So at some point I developed peace within myself that today I shall not be changed. Hallelujah. So uh, the teacher came in, uh, gave an example with my case, like uh, I scored everything. You can imagine how proud I was back then. Uh, very proud, like I'm walking in class and I just want everyone to see, like when I got everything. So the teacher calls me to the front of the class and asks me to explain. That's when I realized I don't know some of the questions that were in there, <laughs> that were assigned as the assignment. So uh, at that point, I realized that, yes, in as much as you may try to acquire peace in life, it is short-lived. The peace that men give you, the peace that the world gives you is short-lived. Yes, I was happy at that particular point that I had been recognized to having done something uh, remarkable in my work. But again, this was not my work. So the peace was short-lived. Hallelujah. So this is just to encourage you that as you seek the peace, as you seek peace uh, for whichever situation that you are in, take note that the peace that comes from the world is short-lived. Yes, in a very short time, a very short time it may be so sweet it may it may seem like a solution at that particular time but when that is taken away from you you go back to a place where you're worse than what you are because you're already accustomed to a particular way of life you're accustomed to a particular way of living you're accustomed to receiving certain rewards you're accustomed to receiving certain compliments from people but when this peace has been taken away from you, then you get to understand that it's not you that is supposed to be. Uh, Jesus, during his time on earth, he told uh, Martha, by the time Martha was 
complaining to Jesus that she wasn't being heard. Jesus told her, Martha, Martha, one thing is needful, yeah, to sit under the feet of Christ, that Mary has chosen something that shall not be taken away from her. So when you choose the person of Christ as your reward, then that cannot be taken away from you. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that the rewards that God gives cannot be taken away from you. When God gives you a reward, when God gives you the peace that you desire, when, God, when you find peace in Christ, that cannot be taken away from you. No matter the circumstances, no matter the environment that is around you, that cannot be taken away from you. Check the three, three uh, Hebrew teenagers, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These three people were living at a particular point where there was persecution for, uh, on the lives of Christians. They were given the choice to worship an idol and uh, have their lives or refuse to bow down to the idols and be executed. So at this particular point, I can only imagine that these people, what these people were feeling, they were like, okay, if it were me and my, if it were one of us during these times, we'd say, okay, for the sake of saving my skin, let me just do it in as much as I don't mean it. But these three Hebrew teenagers knew that in as much as they don't mean it, they cannot do it. They found their comfort in Christ. They said, come what me, this is what I'm standing with. And it baffles me at times that when they are in the flame, it didn't harm them. Not, not a single part of their body was burnt. Not even a hair on their body was damaged. Hallelujah. So you can imagine the kind of environment that these people were in. You are in a, an environment where you are expected to die. By the human thought, you are expected to be uh, suffering. But God sends his, his, his angels to these particular boys. And by the time they were in this furnace, you find that they were conversing. Hallelujah. Imagine being surrounded by fire and you're not feeling it, you're conversing. Ah, what an amazing testimony. So by the time you're getting to a point, you feel like you want to give up or you want to choose a worldly, a worldly um, solution for your peace. Always remember that it is temporary. Yes, it may be very difficult. I'm a victim to that. At times you may think of finding solutions on your own. Yes, it happens. But it's always important to remember the promises that God has given in his word. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 14 verses 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the word gives, do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. So God has given us a promise. That by the time we have him, the, his, 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 his spirit, his power is able to give us that confidence. So you get to a point where you understand that peace is not what you make of it. Peace may not necessarily be how you want to understand it. Peace may not necessarily be how you want to partake of it. Peace may not necessarily be what you want it to be. But the peace that God says, uh, Christ says in his word that he gives is not as that of this word. Hallelujah. So by the time you're getting this concept of peace, it's important that you understand this uh, uh, scripture where God says that, let your heart not be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid when circumstances turn against you. Do not be troubled when things go uh, aside from what you expected them to be. Yes, it happens. Yes, it's it's life. What happens? So, am I, someone may be ask, may be asking, am I saying that you should not be having feelings? No, that's not what I'm saying. Yes, it is human nature to have the feeling, the the feeling aspect. It is human nature to develop anxiety. But what does the promise of God guarantee us? The Lord guarantees His faithfulness in His Scripture, and He says that He will reward us with the peace, even in that storm. Hallelujah. The three Hebrew teenagers who were in the flames, they did not they did they did, they did not stagger the promises of God. 
they did not think like okay i need to fire, find a fire extinguisher this fire is too hot no they stood still believed in god and knew that god their king is able to save them hallelujah so you need to understand that some of uh, the reasons why we we as humans lack peace is because we try to solve things on our own the book of exodus chapter 14 verses 14 uh, maybe let's just open there this uh, scripture blessed me when i was working on this psalm exodus chapter 14 verses 14 hallelujah Exodus chapter 14 verses 14 If you're there, let's read together It says Rather it reads The Lord shall fight for you And ye shall hold your peace Hallelujah, this is so powerful I mean, all the battles That you may intend to face Or rather the battles that come our way God gives us a promise That he will fight for us He will fight for you that battle He will fight the health issue He will fight the financial issue he will fight the attacks upon you, upon your family, upon your business. He will fight your battles for you, like literally. His word says he will fight for you, and you shall have your peace. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that by the time you're getting involved into a concept, or getting involved in a situation which you don't have full understanding about, the God that you serve, the living God, the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac guarantees you that the peace that he is going to give you is sustainable. Hallelujah. So, uh, as humans, we are accustomed to find solutions. Amen. One example is that by the time uh, you are faced with a difficulty, or rather you are faced with a situation that uh, is uncomfortable for you, the first thing that will come into your mind is, what can I do to get myself out of this situation? Very few of us take time and think like, what does God require me? What, or rather, what does the word of God say about this situation? How am I supposed to come out of this situation? Hallelujah. We usually think of what can I do to get myself out of this situation? We do not consider that God has said he will fight the battles for us. I'm not saying that now when things go south, you should just sit and wait, let things go bad because God said he'll fight your battles for you. No. For every situation that you are going through in life, for every situation that uh, we come across in life, a solution has been given in his word. God has given a solution in his word. If it, is it health issue? There are scriptures that speak about your health. You may start praying over the situation. Hallelujah. You're prophesying the word of God over the situation. You say, this health issue, God said, by his stripes I'm healed. Hallelujah. So as you, 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 you prophesy the word of God over that situation, that it comes, it, a difference is coming, a difference is developed. The situation, things are working for your good. Hallelujah. So uh, as you look at it, we say that peace is as easy as trust, trusting God. The moment you trust God, that's when the peace comes. Hallelujah. I know at times it may be difficult, but for you to receive this reward of peace, you need to fix your eyes fully on God. You need to believe that no matter the storm, He is who He is. I remember this story or uh, this narrative in the book of uh, Luke. Uh, by the time Jesus was with His disciples in a boat and there was a storm, all these people, despite having the Messiah with him, with them rather, they were like, okay, what can we do? To a point they were calling out to him and telling him, Master, Master, don't you see that we perish? Hallelujah. So I want us to look at this boat as our lives. So the disciples symbolically will be us. And Jesus will be Jesus just as he has always been. He is Jesus. He has never changed. So this boat is our mind. This boat that the disciples were in with Jesus are who we are right now. So within ourselves, we are in a storm and we feel battled. We feel like we need to be looking for a solution. We are looking outside to find a solution. But the entire time 
the solution is with us. Jesus is the solution. Hallelujah. Jesus is the solution during that particular time of storm. And Jesus was actually sleeping. This man was weird. In a storm, a boat is moving. Okay? He was really weird, yes? I'd say no, he's not weird. Because he knew who he trusts in. He knew who his peace belongs with. Hallelujah. So by the time you acknowledge and you develop yourself to a point where you understand that the peace that you need for that particular situation is not with human beings, it's not with your parents, it's not with your siblings, but with God, then you'll come to a place where you feel content, where despite the chaos that are around you, there is peace within you. Not because things are working good for you, but because God has given you the peace. Hallelujah. Many a times you may think that peace is God taking away our troubles. No. You see that God visited these disciples in the storm. The solution was with them in the storm, not outside the storm. They may say that, okay, why did I bought, bought this boat? Probably James was there saying that I wish I had stayed back and uh, probably dried my nets or something. Maybe Andrew was there saying, okay, maybe I should have been somewhere building my house. Why did I have to come to die in this boat? But we, see, we find a different concept where uh, we see that the solution to our problems, the things that deny us peace, are because we, we ourselves try to reach out to them. We try to fix situations around us. If these people only had asked Jesus, uh, with the power that you have, we believe that you are the Son of God. Please do this for us. You know, like calm the storm. And Jesus just woke up like it's nothing. Jesus woke up like the storm was not even there. And he commanded the storm and after his words, after his uh, prayer, it all settled down. Hallelujah. So many a times we find ourselves in that situation where we lack peace. We're in a storm, yes. But where do you find your peace? The scripture today tells us, the scripture today guarantees us that the reward that we seek is in the person of Christ. Do you understand that Christ can give you this peace? Do you understand that Christ is able to give you contentment in that situation? Hallelujah. Do you believe that Christ is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can imagine? Hallelujah. The scripture says his ways are not our ways. You may think of finding a solution out of where you are. But God is using this process to direct you to your situation, to your solution rather, sorry. Hallelujah. You may see, think that east, because east is greener, it is better. Take the case of Lot, for example. By the time he was given the chance to choose uh, the grazing field, he looked and chose what was appealing to the eye. But after that, he was captured. Hallelujah. So there are things that we may think are solutions for our peace. There are things that uh, may seem dire. The consequences may seem dire for us. But because of Christ in our lives, because of the Lord that we serve, we are able to have this peace within ourselves. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that for you to develop this peace, it does not come by your own, by your own human imagination. It does not come by your strength, by your mind. However, for you to have confidence in Christ to this level, you need the Holy Spirit. And here is why. The book of Romans chapter 15 verses 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Hallelujah. So the moment you start believing, the Holy Spirit fills you up. He fills you up with this peace. The moment you believe in Christ, the moment you believe in his promises, he fills the peace in you, piece by piece. It develops, it builds. Hallelujah. And it continues to say that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So at times it's not that we have peace because we have what we've asked God for. We have peace because we have hope. The Holy Spirit gives us hope. The Holy Spirit instills hope in our lives to a point where we, are, we come to a place that we say, yes, I do not have the finances that I was thinking I would be having by the end of this week, 
but I'm hopeful. God says that he shall supply my need. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit fills you with hope. The Holy Spirit teaches you how to be patient. The Holy Spirit teaches you how to develop the peace within you. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that the peace that God gives may be different from what we think or what we understand. Hallelujah. So we get to understand that the plans that God has for us are not to harm us. Yes, you may be in this in this storm. You may be in that particular stage in your life where you feel like things are not working out. But always have Jeremiah 29, 11 in your mind. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans that are good to, to benefit you and not to harm you. Hallelujah. To this point that you get to understand that peace that God gives is for you. It is a promise that he has given you. Hallelujah. So uh, as we proceed on, read, open with me to the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 79. This is interesting. Luke 1 79. It says, To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the ways of peace. Hallelujah. So you need to get to a point of understanding where we know that peace is not a destination. Peace is a journey. Hallelujah. Peace is not a destination. Peace is a journey. The scripture says that uh, he will give us, he will direct the, he, to give light to those who sit in darkness and shadows of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So it means there is a way that is peaceful that you are walking through, a way that is peaceful for you, a way that is peaceful for that situation, hallelujah so by God's grace we need to develop ourselves to a point that we understand that peace is a journey, it's, a, it's something that, peace is, is a lifestyle, hallelujah peace is not a destination, peace is a lifestyle, by God's grace, so it is impossible to experience peace if you always expect uh, perfection like God in his word uh, Genesis chapter 2 he says he say, the word says that after he had created he looked he saw everything and said it was good take note the scripture says his creation was good not perfect hallelujah his creation was good not perfect so as humans what denies us the peace that we so much desire is the urge of us trying to get things to perfection. Who told you that God wants things perfect for you? God may, the, the, the answer of, of something that you want may be in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. So you need to develop yourself to a point that you stop having expectation of perfection and have trust in Christ. We expect that when God says that he'll give us, uh, he'll bless us, we expect that we'll have the material things, uh, we'll have the big houses, we have uh, expensive things, but at the end of the day, God is just telling you that these things are not the peace that you desire. Hallelujah. So as you wind up, I'd like to encourage you to have this spirit in you, to have this conviction that no matter what you're going through, no matter the storm that you are in, God is working on you. Hallelujah. God is still in progress on you. God is still on your case. Hallelujah. God has not forsaken you. And I want us to make uh, a simple prayer as we make this uh, final, as we wind up this session. From the scripture that we just read, the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 79. For those of you who lack peace, whichever thing that is denying you the peace, I want us just to ask the Holy Spirit to direct our steps. To direct us to places where our human thoughts can never imagine of us having peace. Hallelujah. So let us just bow our heads and make this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this day that as your spirit leads us, oh Lord, may you direct us to the paths that you may find our answers, oh Lord. That you may find contentment, that you may walk in the path of peace, Jehovah Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for you who's watching, 
you can be you can join us or you can find a good bible based church where you'll be nurtured and developed to a point where you understand peace the way god wants you to understand it and by god's grace you shall be blessed in jesus name amen thank you for joining us and may god bless you